Today, I'm gonna to review this hatchet. It's a Fiskars, I'm sure most of you probably recognize it. Uh, you've seen them all over the place. You've seen them in Walmart. You've, you maybe have one or two of your own. They have axes, they have splitting malls, they have little, you know, little uh, camp hatchets that are smaller. This is an older one. I think I bought this about 10 years ago and I have put it through, I wanna say I put it through every kind of abuse you can put an ax or a hatchet through. Um, but there may be something that I'm missing. I don't think I've ever driven over it. I thought about doing that just for this video, um, but on the outside chance that I actually do destroy it, I don't think I'm gonna do that. Originally, I was gonna title this video, Why You Should Hate This Hatchet. And I will explain my reasoning a little bit toward the end of the video. But first, I'm gonna do my best to give this thing an unbiased and honest review. One minor qualification here at the beginning, I have used hatchets and axes and splitting walls pretty much all my life, but I'm what you would call probably a pretty typical, more or less casual user of axes and hatchets, not at all a professional or a connoisseur or anything like that. But with that out of the way, I have uh, subjected a few hatchets to some pretty serious abuse in my life. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is to use the non-striking surface to pound nails. The first thing I want to address is the durability. Uh, when I first saw this, and again, this is probably 10 years ago, I, I have to admit that I was a little bit skeptical. I uh, wasn't sure about this, whatever material this is, plastic composite material. I wasn't sure how the head of the hatchet was connected internally. I felt like, well, maybe this thing cracks and breaks. What if the head flies off? Uh, obviously, you can see that hasn't been a problem. But some of the things that I've used this for over the years, uh, I have, uh, I've absolutely batoned this. In fact, I've probably uh, got it stuck in wood and hit it with a, with a hammer or a maul or something to, to drive it through wood before, uh, which I, by the way, do not recommend. I've used it as a hammer, which probably also voids the warranty. I don't know exactly what Fiskars says about this particular model of hatchet, but it is not intended as a hammer. But as you can see, it has seen a lot of abuse. I have thrown this hatchet. Um, I am not a, an expert at throwing pretty much anything, but I have practiced a lot throwing this hatchet and sticking it into things, sticking it into trees or stumps or whatever. And uh, probably like most people, uh, most of the time I do that, I miss. And so this thing has bounced off of trees and wound up in gravel and rocks and, uh, you know, or, or the wrong, you know, hits the, hits the tree with the back end like this and bounces up and falls down into a pile of rocks or whatever. I have used this in ways that uh, that no tool should probably ever be used, but let's let's be honest with ourselves. A lot of tools do wind up being used in those ways. Some things that I think make it an excellent choice as uh, as a as a companion for say camping trips or um, you know Fourth of July outings or that type of thing. It's very lightweight. It's at least as light as any of the hatchets I've seen that have a more a traditional construction and probably lighter than most. So the hatchet clips nicely into there, and that's actually fairly secure. You can, you can shake it pretty good and bang it into stuff, and it doesn't come off of there. Um, but it's also real easy to get it out. You just kind of put your thumb there and pop that off of there. You know, and I kind of expected that I would lose this after a few months or a few years of use, but it's just so convenient to snap it in there, and it protects the blade, but it's real easy to pop it off, and there you have it. There's no snaps to mess around with or anything. Uh, real easy to throw this in a backpack. Once you have it clipped in, it's extremely unlikely to come out of here on its own, and that blade isn't likely to catch on something, do any damage inside of a pack. Also, this is real convenient for carrying it. Sometimes I'll set off on a hike and I'll just carry this with me like this. You know, a bottle of water and my Fisker's camp axe. Which brings me to another point that I'll make real quickly here, because I don't think it's a primary purpose or primary use of this, but it is so lightweight, and yet it can still be used defensively if need be. You know, if you're out on a trail and, uh, Maybe a stray dog comes up to you. I'm not saying that you just need to go and hack away at it with this thing, but even leaving the hatchet clipped in to the guard, uh, you can still use that pretty effectively as a deterrent against even, you know, really a pretty big dog. So this definitely has a wide range of utility uh, and, could, and can be used in a lot of different situations. Another good thing about this uh, for camping purposes is that it's high visibility. And although the grip back here is a little bit, it feels a little bit slick, 
but actually it's surprisingly grippy when you get just a little bit of, uh, of moisture on, you, on your hand. You know, you start to sweat just a little bit. It actually grips your hand really well, which I was kind of surprised and pleasantly surprised by. I've never used a lanyard with it, but obviously there's a hole there for a lanyard loop. If you want a little bit of extra security to know this thing is not coming out of your hand, you can absolutely run, uh, run a lanyard through there. And I think it's a really well thought out design. When I bought this, I was really uncertain about the way the, the blade is, is mated to the handle. And, you know, I've never seen one of these cut apart. I've thought about doing it with this one, and I might do that in a future video just to see. But however it's constructed, it's not coming apart. Like I said, I have used this for 10 years, and I have put it through terrible abuse. And you can see there's, you know, parts that have actually broken and come up right along the, the axe head there. And you can see there's a pretty deep cut in there from, I don't even remember how I did that. And of course, countless, countless hours of hammering and splitting and batoning. None of that has affected the bond between the head and the handle of the hatchet. I'm not real clear on what steel was used for this. It's a tough steel for sure, but it will lose its edge. That doesn't surprise me, I guess, being a person who's spent many hours using hatchets and axes. Sharpening an axe or a hatchet is, an, is kind of a normal part of owning it. And I've really only had to sharpen it a few times. For any kind of normal use that a person is going to do, I think you'll be more than satisfied with the performance of the steel. And finally, um, I'll say the price on this isn't absolutely fantastic. There are camp axes and hatchets that you can buy for maybe $7 or $10 if you want to shop around a little bit. Uh, this is about a 20 to 25 typically. And there are some newer models out that are priced very similarly. So while it's not the cheapest axe or hatchet on the market, for the quality you're getting, I think this is still an excellent choice. This is a very lightweight, functional, durable hatchet that's going to last for years and years of any kind of normal use. And based on my experience, would probably stand up to years of hard use. So after spending the last five or 10 minutes praising the virtues of this hatchet, why would I ever say that you should hate it? Well, if you like forging, blacksmithing, bladesmithing, woodwork, this hatchet pretty much represents the opposite of all of those things. There's nothing traditional about it. These are obviously mass produced. And as near as I can tell, every single one comes off an assembly line someplace and it looks exactly like the one that went off before it and the one that's coming off the assembly line after. With that said, is it functional? Absolutely. Is it high quality, well-made, well-designed, capable in the field? Absolutely. Will you be disappointed or poorly served if you buy one of the Fisker's hatchets or axes? Absolutely not, at least not from my experience. So thanks for watching the show. If you found this valuable, give me a like, subscribe to the channel. And if you have anything you want to say about this hatchet, maybe you have a different experience than the one I've had, by all means, leave it in the comments below, and we will see you in the next video.